Hi, my name is Noah Gift, and I'm the author of Practical ML Ops. And I'm going to talk a little bit about an ML Ops recipe next by taking Hugging Face, a popular pre-trained model site, and I'm going to build a end-to-end -end solution using GitHub Actions to push a model directly into their spaces location and then demo out a working application. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at this application of a Hugging Face MLOps workflow. First up, I'm going to go to Hugging Face and I'm going to require a authenticated account so that I can have a token here. Once I have this token, I'm going to go over to GitHub and I'm going to launch a GitHub code space so I can develop my application locally. Then once I've developed it, I'll programmatically push it using GitHub Actions. This will be able to use a Hugging Face model that it was actually able to pull from Hugging Face. It'll go into Hugging Face spaces and use a technology called Gradio. I'll build out an app and then I'll be able to do text summarization using that application. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're in Hugging Face. And the first thing to do is to make sure you have an account. Uh, so go ahead and create an account at Hugging Face. And then uh, I'll give you a brief overview. We have models, data sets, spaces, docs, solutions, pricing. Really what we care about is models here and spaces. If we click on models, you can see there's many different things that you can do. Uh, and this is one of the powerful things about this platform. There's 45 or 47,000 models. If we go to spaces, this is where you would go ahead and host your ML app. Uh, and even further, we can actually do this via continuous delivery. So first up, what I would do is I would create a new space and I'm gonna call this uh, demo two. Uh, and inside of here, we can put some kind of a license like Creative Commons, and then I would select Gradio uh, as my uh, solution for serving out the MLOps uh, uh, application. And I'll go ahead and say create space. At this point, it's pretty straightforward. All I need to do is clone this repo uh, and start working on it somewhere else. So my favorite place to work uh, is the uh, GitHub Code Spaces environment. Uh, and later I'm going to push this using GitHub Code Spaces. So let's go ahead and head over there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say new repo. And we'll go ahead and call this uh, Hugging Face Demo 2. Uh, and I will go ahead and just add a readme file, uh, put a Python, uh, git ignore here, and uh, Creative Commons as well. There we go, create the repo. Now, what's great about my environment here is that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on code, and I'm going to uh, enable a different environment called create uh, code spaces. And so what code spaces will allow me to do is code spaces will actually let me uh, select a, a larger environment. So this is handy for machine learning. Look at this 16 core, 32 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. Let's go ahead and select that and let's go ahead and launch it inside of this environment. Now next, uh, all I really need to do here is build out a scaffold for a project. This is something I recommend uh, in any project is to you know build out a structure for it so you can get started, make this a little bit bigger. So the first uh, part that I would build out would be that I would create a virtual environment. Uh, and this is a helpful thing to do uh, for our project, virtual MV, here we go. And then uh, next up, what I will do is uh, I will edit my bashrc file here, and this bashrc file at the very bottom, I'll just source things. So I'll say source tilde dot uh, venv bin activate, and and now every time I open up a shell, uh, it will have a virtual environment. Great, we got that working, and then I'll create a requirements file. I'll also create a app.py, and I'll also uh, go ahead and create a, uh, a make file as well. There we go, this looks pretty good. And because I've already done some of this stuff earlier, I'm just gonna copy this inside. And so I'm gonna take a make file here, and I'm gonna paste some things inside. Re really the big takeaway for the make file is that it's a, it's a nice way to deal with uh, dependencies 
And then I'll also go through here and I'll put in a requirements file, which will have the requirements that I need for my project. The, the main ones to be aware of is uh, Gradio, the, also the transformers. And uh, in my case, I prefer to use TensorFlow. So I'll go ahead and use TensorFlow. <clears throat> Next up, what I will do is uh, put my application code inside of here. And in this case, uh, this application will use the transformers, which allows me to load any model from TensorFlow. We'll also use Gradio, which will be the user interface. I'll go ahead and make my model right here. I'll have a predict function. In this case, it'll grab the output from the model and it will summarize the text. And I use this uh, piece of code here with gr.blocks as demo. And I go through here and I create a text block and then I launch my interface. So only a few lines of code to make a full working uh, application that summarizes text. How do I get this working? I'll just say make install. There we go. And once I go ahead and I do a make install, uh, this will allow me to use the super powerful environment I have, which is again why I like code spaces. I like developing the cloud in general because I can pick very powerful machines to work with temporarily. All right, so we're able to get that answer. It's able to summarize the text into just a few sentences and it, and it looks logical to me. Now, this is great because this is something I can play around with, but for me, MLOps is about getting it into production. So in order to do this, we'll, we'll need to do a couple other steps. First, we'll have to go over to Hugging Face and we'll go over to your profile in this case. And you can see that uh, this is my profile. And then I wanna go to the settings. And once I go to settings, I can create access tokens. I'll wanna create a new access token right here and it'll be a read and write token. This would be for uh, doing GitHub uh, actions deploy, just like that. And then this will go through here and uh, deploy a token. Uh, in this case, there we go, I can grab that token uh, and I can copy it. And then all I would need to do is go back to this application and go over to repository and go to settings and go to um, secrets. And I would cre create a secret right here for actions and we'll say there's no secrets yet. So we'll go ahead and do this and I would paste that in there. So I'm gonna first call this uh, HG, hugging face, paste the secret in here, add the secret. Uh, and uh, now that's all I need to do to get the deploy working other than editing an action. So next, I'll go ahead and create an action right here. Uh, and let's go ahead and set up a workflow ourselves. And what I'll do is since I already have a working actions, uh, I will go through here and uh, take my main file here and I will go ahead and uh, paste it in. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and let's uh, paste this in right here. Uh, and if we, if we go through here, we can see that all this looks good. Uh, and what it's gonna do is going to uh, take that, that secret uh, and it's going to do a get remote add space right here. And it's gonna push this. In this case, this would be to demo uh, two. And then this one would be to demo two as well. So this would just need to match whatever your, uh, co whatever your code space uh, is inside of Hugging Face. And then you would just go ahead and commit that. And once you've committed it, then it's basically ready to go and it'll start synchronizing remotely. So uh, that's really the steps necessary to, to push this out. So I've already got a, a version of this working. So let's go ahead and go over to uh, a working version and let's take a look at it. This is this Hugging Face repo. It's got all the things we talked about. One thing I did not mention that is important is if you go back to Hugging Face here and you go to your spaces, uh, which is here, notice that this has to have an application file. And so it's important to, to make sure that you, you also have uh, some, some information inside of your uh, Hugging Face environment. And so what I would first start with is this get clone. And notice the difference here is that this one is now working, everything's ready. You can see all the different files and this readme file in particular, it has this structure. So you must have this structure inside so that you can configure your, your application. Once you've got all that working, 
then every time you make a change, it'll go ahead and push that into production. And you can even put a GitHub Actions uh, badge right here that shows you exactly what's occurring. So let's go back to Hugging Face and I'm gonna go to my profile. I'm gonna select it. You'll see that there's the original space and then the space that does continuous delivery. For the space that does continuous delivery, I'll go ahead and uh, click it and you'll see that I can enter blocks of text inside of here. So again, I can go ahead and grab this, grab this text, go ahead and put it uh, inside and then it will be working inside of the Hugging Face interface. So it's a fully deployed application that I can share with other people and you can actually see this thing running. When it's finished, you'll see the output right here that'll show me that uh, it's actually working successfully. So I could go and do this to any other model that exists on their platform. Again, I could do auto classification, token, speech recognition, uh, whatever it is I wanna do all through this Spaces interface.